Good morning. Welcome to the Tuesday Adams Show. This is Tuesday Adams. I'm your host. And <clears throat> um, we are doing a podcast, and this is my YouTube video, um, on um, human sacrifice. This is um, evidence of a satanic marriage. It's fact-based. It was a book written by me in 2018. I have not published it yet, but I'm doing podcasts on it. Um, this particular one is ritualistic torture and the use of sexual shaming. Okay, so my husband was uh, in a satanic cult. Um, his mother was Susan McKee. Props. Susan Props. And um, she married a man named James McKee, who's also in his cult. He lives in Ohio. Um, and they had his older brother, which is R- Richard R- Rick McKee. And um, then his name is Glenn Aaron Catfield. That was my ex husband. He um, was cremated almost two years ago, November 22nd, 2021. He shot himself. His mother was shot by his gun in 2000, or I mean, in uh, December, December 19, uh, 1989. Um, he was the only one there. It was his gun, but it was ruled a suicide. Um, her husband, Gary Miller, was a firefighter. Uh, it's Gary Miller Sr. Um, and his stepbrother was Gary Miller Jr., he has, he, he, at the time, they were um, practicing um, rituals out of the Necronomicon and the Satanic Bible, Bible by uh, Anton LaVey. And um, the further that I got into um, my husband's circle, the higher up I found out that they use the Solomon Sills. And uh, they are not just firefighters and fire chiefs. They are police chiefs, lawyers, doctors, morticians, coroners, pediatricians, OBGYN prenatal doctors. From the beginning to the end, from birth to death, they are trafficked around. The children are stolen. The parents are set up. Women, mother, mothers, females are sacrificed for their power, for the satanic power. It usually goes to the men. There's hardly any women in it, but there are women in it too. And they are usually the worst kind of predators. Um, <clears throat> they understand everything that's happening. They're educated. And they do it on purpose. And it's always about money. For the love of money is the root of all evil. All of my children were forced to make the decision to sacrifice truth, the love, true love, and their mother, their mother's innocence, and their brother's innocence for money from a lawsuit that didn't belong to them. They shamed me, lied about me, and did it for money. That was their first ritual to in, in their initiation into the satanic cult. They were all too young to be held responsible for that. Okay. Um, but um, they are still involved, and they were their their tongue was cut out. Their arm was broke off. And their lips were shown shut. They are not allowed to speak. They're sworn to silence. And um, this is part of the rich satanic rituals in this cult that um, it's part of the rules for their power. Okay, so that they can have what they want when when they want. They can live the way they want to, but um, they always end in death. My husband shot himself. Over about a year, two years ago, and his body was cremated. Um, he never did get any respect or anything that he wanted. He never got it, the money that he was promised. He never got anything that he was promised, and he did everything they told him to. Um, 
he got dishonorable discharge from the Marine Corps. Um, everybody blamed him, even though he had blamed me and scapegoated me and everybody else. But they promised him the world, and they, and they, and they never gave him anything. And they promised my kids the same thing. My son is sitting in prison at Wabash, William Hatfield, for 15 years because the person that set him up snitched him out, right, and got, got out of it. He was 10 years older than him, was a um, homosexual child predator. And my son is paying the price for what they did. For 15 years, he's in jail, in prison, and he doesn't deserve to be there. He's autistic. He was young. He was, he was put in YOC when he was 14. His father set it up, and he's never been free since. While he's been in there, um, there's been chances for him to get out, and the lawyers will not get him out. And I, 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 I bet I, I really don't believe he belongs in there. And um, he's never been free, but he has to be able to wake up and see what actually happened. He has to be able to have his lips loosened, his tongue loosened, and his prosthetic arm put back on so he can start writing the truth. And speaking the truth and speaking out and, and, and telling them what happened. Um, he lied about me. Um, they gave me his, my, my ex-husband's mother's reputation. when She was a, a heroin needle user. Uh, she got clean though. But uh, most of the things that happened, that he said happened, actually happened to my husband, not to my son. So I took, I was scapegoated. And I was not a drug addict, not an alcoholic. They do attack my beard. It's ritualistic torture. Okay, they shame me for masturbating. That's a legal search and seizure. Nobody's allowed to know what I'm doing, when I'm doing it, if I'm in the privacy of a bathroom or my bedroom or in my own home. Nobody's allowed to go outside and be torturing me about what the fuck I'm doing. Even if I'm having sex, which I'm not. Okay. That is a legal search and seizure. It's sexual shaming. And it's torture. It's ritualistic torture. Okay, over and over and over. For something that's healthy. I'm. A, it's healthy. Any doctor, ask any doctor, masturbation is healthy. No one, what is, what is an obsessed person who is a predator, who is mentally ill, would take that and use it against me for what reason? For what reason? Okay, so I've got a message to give to my son. They took off and left. Um, they took my truck, him and his girlfriend, Amber and Beatty, which has got the mindset maturity of a 13-year-old, and she's autistic, and she's also got uh, exhibit signs of being a psychopath. She's a predator, and she has no heart. She does not love my son. She's using him. He's her slave. He doesn't go to the doctor. Hasn't been to the doctor in six years. He will not disrobe. He will not disrobe. Something's wrong with that. He won't take out his contacts. Scared to death to take out his contacts. Can't see. His eyes are almost gone. He had 20-20 vision when he was with me at 12. They took him and kidnapped him. Okay. I didn't do anything. He didn't do anything. And they're telling him, this is the first I heard of this that something happened between me and him no it didn't that is not true this is the first i ever heard of it. nobody ever come and asked me about anything like that if that's what they're doing that's torture it's part of a predator circle they want to set him up to sacrifice him for the money that is a satanic practice okay and they're going to make him think he's in on it. And once he does, he gets punished for doing it. Because it's his mother he's sacrificing. He's not guilty, and I'm not guilty, and he knows this. Okay, I'm going to tell you what happened, why he went to foster care. He was in Youth Opportunity Center, a group home where my other son was, one that's in prison. Okay, 
because my ex-husband would not leave me alone. He kept calling the police. Okay. Um, he, I got divorced in 2006. In June of 2006, our divorce was finalized. In October, I was working at Arby's. They had dressed my son, my youngest son, the one that I'm talking about, Taylor, in a KKK sheet, the lady, the lady that worked at the YOC staff, his name was Chyla, and she was black, and she dressed him up in a KKK sheet with racial slurs all over it. You're not allowed to take your cameras in there. Well, I took my phone in there with a camera. I took a picture, okay, and I printed it out, and I uh, went to work, and I got her fired, okay, from YOC. I, I took it to the director, and then I went to work at Arby's, okay. I called the state police. I made a report of criminal abuse by YOC. Okay. What happened was they took him out of the group home and put him in foster care. Why? I was working and I went to jail. The, the state police took me to jail for a warrant for a failure to appear and I'm working and I've got a $120,000 home and I'm trying to pay the bills and work. Why didn't a warrant for a failure to appear for what? And why? Why would he take me to jail when I'm at work? Why didn't he, you know, he didn't have to. They have a choice. He could have said, well, you know, you need to go tomorrow up to the courthouse and take care of us. Don't you know you have a warrant? You need to go fix it. He could have done that. No, he made me get fired from my job. And I have to work to survive. And I'm reporting abuse from a staff member where my son's at. I had a $120,000 home that was going to my children. It was their inheritance. I was set up to be put on my to be put on disability when I'm not crazy. Nothing's wrong with me. I was a victim of a human traffic ring and a sex, a satanic a satanic cult. Okay? From the time I was 16. My kids are still in it. They still children. They kidnap them. They alienate the parents. Parent, parental alienation is abuse and it's illegal. Okay. Well, <clears throat> they're not allowed to blame me for everything my husband did. And that he has a history of it. And he's dead now. And there's proof he was arrested for prostitution. He was arrested for attempted murder. He was arrested with a deadly weapon. He was arrested as a meth manufacturer and a, and a drug dealer. He was a criminal. He was a thief. He was arrested for grand theft auto. He was arrested for arson. My ex-husband was that person behind my back. When we were not together, that's what he did. Okay? He didn't do that when we were together. He really tried to do good when we were together because I didn't know anything about that. He led a sec second life, a secret life. Okay, well, I found out about it. As soon as he got my kids taken and ripped away from me and my, my inheritance ripped away from me and their inheritance ripped away from them, he started taking their kids away. He set them up and started taking their kids away and started putting them in prison because they sacrificed the innocence. They sacrificed the truth. They sacrificed love. For their money that did belong to them. The root of all evil is the love of money. The initiation into the satanic cult, it's ritual. This is a ritualistic torture technique, okay, that they use to scapegoat innocent human sacrifices in order to kidnap your children and their predators, child predators. They're preying on your children. They're child murderers. These people are sexual predators for your children. That's all they want. And then they want money. And they want to cover it up. And there are so many people that are rich, that snuff films are real. Okay. Um arsonists, rapists, where, where they mutilate your bodies after you're, after they rape you, after they kill you, they rape you, after you're dead, because the power is what they want to steal, okay, 
I bend, they mutilate your body, cut you in half, burn your lower torso to hide the evidence or semen. Okay, so this has happened so many times. It's ridiculous. Um, we need more people, women who are uh, acknowledge that this is real and people who care that this is really happening in America <laughs> every day it can be happening to you. Okay. Sexual shaming is illegal and it's illegal search and seizure. It's illegal. It's invasion of privacy. It's torture. Okay. If this is happening to you or someone you know, contact me, Tuesday Adams. Contact my show, the Tuesday Adams show, at TuesdayAdams666 at gmail.com. Um, um, it's very important to recognize the signs of ritualistic torture and torture and shaming, sexual shaming. No one's allowed to know what you're doing behind closed doors. And they're not allowed to take it outside to their whole circle and be pointing down on you for something they don't even know if it's true or not. And they, 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 and that's what I, I, and they're trying to blame. No, they're doing this to my son. It's a setup. I want you to know it's a setup because that's not what happened. That's not why this happened. I told you why this happened. It was a racist issue. That is only shaming and torturing you. Nobody's perfect. She's just as guilty. I'm going to tell you what, don't let it happen. I'm paying the bills over at the apartment. Kayla, you can come home anytime. Make the decision to leave her. You're not going to die without her. She's going to die without you. You're the one who's important. She's after you. She's a predator. It's illegal for her to be shaming you. She don't even like you. You don't go through this unless they don't like you. Because when you go through this, to help you heal it go, is to go to counseling, to let it go, to love you anyway, not to keep shaming you and keep taking you away from the people that love you. You're allowed to have your mom, your brothers. You're allowed to have your family and your daughter. You're allowed to have love and support. You're allowed to have people. You're allowed to have money. You're allowed to make your own decisions. You're allowed to have independence. Okay. You're allowed to do whatever you want to do, but no, you're not. She is. And she's telling you what to do. She's not mentally healthy enough to be telling you what to do. She's not healthy enough to be in control of everything that you do. Okay. I just want to tell you, this is happening because she don't like you. Your girlfriend is your worst enemy. Okay. She uses you. She uses people and trashes them and she can't get what she wants. You die if she don't get her way. Come on. That's your worst enemy. There's nothing you can do to change her because she don't like you anyway. She can't treat you good because you have to kiss her ass. It's about her, not your health and welfare and well-being. She's not about to let you spend any time with somebody who's going to tell you the truth so she loses control. She don't love you. That's not love. But I'm here for you. I'm paying the bills. Everything's fine. They are trying to control everything around me. They won't hire me here, but I'm getting ready to change everything. I'm going to let them know who I am and what's going on. I've already contacted the FBI in Springfield. The police know. Douglas County Sheriff knows. The chief here knows. Everybody knows what's going on. You're kidnapped. You're a victim of a human traffic ring. And you're being tortured by the person you trust the most your girlfriend and she's your worst enemy she don't even like you she's only doing it because she only wants control okay that's illegal that's abusive it's criminal abuse it's ritual ritualistic torture is what you're suffering from okay you can come home i don't know if she's cutting him with razors why won't he just robe why won't he go to the doctor? It's been six years. Why won't he take his contacts out? He had 20-20 vision when he was with me. His eyes are almost gone. Something's wrong. If he can't take care of himself and he can't pay his support and can't pay his bills because she won't let him.
and she's a drug addict and she's no more mature than a 13 year old and she's a psychopath and they're part of the satanic predator cult and her uncle's a lawyer it's about the money do not choose to sacrifice the innocence for the love of money okay please please come home come to your apartment You're, nobody's been in your bedroom since you left I locked it I don't have the key okay that's your bedroom I'm not going in there that's yours all yours okay I love you Taylor Billy Dustin you need to come together and support each other we need to get our grandkids together and have a family and forget the people that you're with they're all predators they're all part of the circle okay take that money take your kids and me and we can go somewhere and we'll put walls up and nobody like that will ever touch us again okay we'll make a um a will and a state and make sure it stays in the family and nobody gets in but we have to go to college we have to send the kids to college we have to send the grandkids to college and i'm going to college everybody's everybody needs to go to college and, and wake up we need to push these predators out there high school dropouts immature sexual deviants criminals and drug addicts you don't need your, your kids don't need it you don't need it we never did we always only needed each other we had our family that was what was important you can get your innocence back you can get your righteousness back you could get your life back but you have to make sure that you don't sacrifice the truth, true love, or innocent people like your mother <laughs> for the love of money, for money that you will never receive or get control of because they punish you for that. You know better. Okay, so um, again, if you're a victim of human trafficking, ritualistic torture, sexual shaming, please contact my show contact me tuesday adams 666 at gmail.com have a great sunday